Naruto 10 Best Villains, Ranked The legendary Naruto series introduced us to several interesting and well-written villains, but these are surely some of the best ones. Naruto has become one of the most well-known anime to ever exist. It is so popular that its characters, weapons, attacks, and even clothing have become extremely recognizable, even to those that don't watch anime. Villains are an important part of the series, as they help set the foundation for the story to flow along. In the case of Naruto, some of the most popular characters are antagonists. Here are 10 of the best it has to offer. 10. Danzo Danzo is a character that is easy to hate due to his involvement in the Uchiha clan conspiracy. He's a power-hungry man who claims to want to help the village but has never once been shown to help the citizens. Villains like these are sometimes necessary for plot progression. Danzo is one of the main factors in why Sasuke's backstory happened. 9. Kagaya Kagaya is one of the strongest characters in Shippuden, being a goddess with a storyline that reveals the origin of all chakra. A lot of background lore was revealed during her story arc. Additionally, seeing Naruto, Sasuke, Sakura, Kakashi, and Obito all team up to defeat her resulted in some really great action sequences. The reason she places low is due to how her story is forced in the last second. Over half of Shippuden was building up Madara as potentially the final villain, but Kagaya is dropped into the story out of nowhere. Her personality is very minimalistic, which also holds her back. 8. Kabuto Kabuto left a strong first impression on many people in the Chunin exams. He was a secret spy for Orochimaru that excelled in healing magic. There was a lot of potential for him, but Kabuto did very little for a large amount of the overarching story. He would eventually become integral to the Fourth Great Ninja War, yet doesn't nearly get the same recognition as Madara and Obito do. One of Kabuto's biggest strengths was how mysterious he was. His backstory and true motivation didn't quite live up to expectations. Still, he has done enough in a few story arcs to warrant being higher than most antagonists with brief screen time. 7. Gara. Gara may be a fan favorite character, but this is due to his character development. Most people like him for the caring ally he eventually turned into. This placement is only taking into consideration what he did as a villain which mostly boils down to a single storyline. Gara was a monster in the Chunin exams. He killed many opponents prior to the tournament and showed off overwhelming power against Lee. Gara is also the second Jinchuriki viewers meet throughout the series. 6. Zabuza and Haku The first main antagonists in the series are special because of the emotional impact they left behind. They are entirely different characters but their backstory is so intertwined that they deserve to share this placement together. Zabuza used Haku as a tool for most of his life but goes through character development near the end of their storyline. These two share a bittersweet bond that has created one of the very first sad moments in the series. 5. Pain, Nagato. Pain is a devastatingly powerful opponent that reduces the entire hidden leaf village to rubble. Naruto's fight against him resulted in the village finally seeing Naruto for the kind-hearted hero he is. The person behind the Paths of Pain is a previous student of Jiraiya, which also makes this sequence much more impactful. Nagato is what Naruto could have become under different circumstances. 4. Orochimaru. Orochimaru was a part of the series for nearly its entire run. They first appeared in the Chunin exams and have consistently shown up in almost every major story arc, whereas most other villains only last a third of the series at most. Additionally, Orochimaru was one of the strongest characters prior to Shippuden's second half. Nearly every character has a fear of Orochimaru due to their powerful ninjutsu, willingness to experiment on people, and mysterious motives. 3. Obito Obito was initially introduced into the series as a masked Akatsuki named Tobi. He was quite silly at first but was secretly an evil mastermind. There were very dull moments when he was on screen due to his connection to multiple other characters and his knowledge of the shinobi world's darkest secrets. 
many of Obito's past actions had severe effects on the entire shinobi world. His attacking the Hidden Leaf Village, for example, led to the deaths of nearly every member of the Uchiha clan. The Infinite Tsukuyomi plan wasn't his own concept, but he was the one that fought on the front lines the most in an attempt to achieve it. Just like Nagato, Obito is also an example of what Naruto could have become had a few different circumstances in his life been different. 2. Itachi and Sasuke. These two are being ranked together since they are closer to antiheroes than villains and due to how heavily connected their stories are. Without one story, the others wouldn't exist. Itachi killed his own family, but this was to prevent them from killing nearly the entire village in a war. He willingly takes the blame for many actions to look like a bad guy despite having done only some crimes. Sasuke just wanted power to be able to get revenge on his brother without knowing the full context of what happened. He eventually became antagonistic toward the village after learning the truth. While he did want to destroy the entire village, most of his actions were actually beneficial. He defeated Danzo, helped put an end to Kabuto's reanimated army, and was one of Naruto's strongest allies near the end of the war. These two aren't entirely evil so it's unjust to say they're the best villains in the series, but they are well written enough to deserve to be near the top. 1. Madara. Madara is the pent ultimate villain in Shippuden and the one at the heart of most storylines. His shows the foundation of the Hidden Leaf Village and the origin of prejudice against the Uchiha clan. Even Kaguya's lore extends to him, as he is the reincarnation of one of her grandchildren. Madara would have been a perfect final antagonist due to how nearly everything prior built up to him so well. Even the Akatsuki and Obito were just pawns for his infinite Tsukuyomi plan. That's all we have for you today. Make sure to subscribe, share and don't forget to leave your thought below.